as our White Sox, somewhat surprisingly to most experts, in second place. And let's take a look at how Maniac is going to line up his tribe tonight. Michael Brantley is going to lead it off. Then it's Jason Donald, Ezdrubal Cabrera, Carlos Santana. After the DH with Duncan, the local area product, Jason Kipnis, Cunningham, and Lou Marson rounding it out. The defense and how they'll line up behind Chris Sale. Chris Cieto, Diaz, and Rios in the infield. Morel, Ramirez, Beckham, and Dunn. A.J. Przinski gets a nod behind the plate. And Chris Sale on the hill looking for win number three. The ERA a very fine 3-1-2. On for his fifth start of the year. The umpires for the game tonight. Tim Timmons behind the plate. Jeff Kellogg is at first. Eric Cooper is at second. And Marty Foster is at third. So as they throw the ball around the infield, we're finally ready to play baseball, and I will throw it to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you, and once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here with WGN Sports on the U. So happy you could join us for the first of this three-game series. This is the third meeting of the year between these two clubs. We had one game laying down, as you may recall, which will be made up on the seventh of this month. In that day night doubleheader in Cleveland and the Sox in those two games won them both. So here we go. Chris Sale with the. First pitch of the ball game and there's a strike. Brantley comes in hitting at 250. No homers. He's driven in five. Indians as a club hitting at 244 with a 4.10 ERA. They have a. Record similar to our Sox. We are four and seven at home, seven and four on the road. They are four and seven at home and seven and two on the road. Most surprising with every team in the division under 500 at home. One and two the count. Now field around to the left. So officially a 56 minute rain delay. Brantley one of the three left handers to face sale tonight. They have the switch hitting Cabrera the switch hitting Santana hitting three and four and they'll face him from the right side of course. And that's in the center field. Alejandro got a man there. One down. So that'll bring up Jason Donald, the third baseman, hitting at 206. No homers. He's driven in three. I know it doesn't bother the players or anybody. Stay here as long as it takes to get this game in because double headers with the way the game is structured today absolutely are a no no. You don't want to stay away from double headers. No, and that's whether it's the first or second trip in, that's the last thing you want. Even a split double header still puts a lot of strain on your staff. Although there is a new rule, and that is. On the day of that split double header, you're allowed to expand your roster by one to 26. And that is a high pop up. Alexei. So two now. Well, that's a good rule. That's a good rule because everything is structured around the bullpen as opposed to 40 or 50 years ago when the bullpen really didn't mean that much. No, and that double header might have a ripple effect on your pitching staff, especially if the next day your pitcher gets knocked out early. Before you know it, those guys are piling up the appearances, and maybe it hurts you two weeks down the road. That's why that nobody wants any double headers. No. So here's Cabrera at 286. A couple of homers, he's driven in four. Takes ball one. He has faced Chris Sale nine times and has two hits. 
There's a chopper back to the middle. Nice short hop. Stab right there by Alexei and a very quick one two three inning for the sale after happening to play as their guys nothing and our guys coming to bat. Sox tonight. Alejandro Diaz leading off, and it's Ramirez. Adam Dunn at first base with Pauly, the DH. AJ behind the plate. Alex, Diane, Brent, and Gordon round out the starting nine. The defense. Left to right. Duncan, Brantley, and Cunningham in the infield. Donald, Cabrera, Kipnis, and Santana. Lou Marson, the good catch it and throw it guy behind the plate. And Ubaldo Jimenez on the mound. On for his fifth start of the year. We did not see him in Cleveland. He's two and one ERA. Not great at four and a half. A few too many walks for the big right hander. And hopefully he finds the streak of that wildness tonight. And before we show you our picks to click you at home select yours. As here is Diaza comes in at 247 three homers and seven knocked in. And that rain is coming down a little bit harder right now. Yep. The 1 0 pitch. 2 and nothing. Gaza has faced Jimenez nine times, has four hits. Season Steve took. Got to pad that early lead. There's a strike and a count 2 and 1. Yeah, Ubaldo, 6'5, 210 pounds, 28 years old, Alexander Domingo. And the count runs to three and one. Here at the ballpark, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400. Straight away center is there, is the leadoff wall. That's that control we were talking about. And that digs you into a hole. Well, he's now walked 15 and 13 innings. So here's Alexei. Alexei at 207, a homer. He's driven in six. Now he has faced him in his 12 times and has two hits. And he takes ball one. When you get a guy like this, you just don't want to help him out. No, you don't want to try to steal anything early. You want to see if maybe he'll walk himself into some difficulty as Joe McEwing goes through his set of signs. Alfield, straight up and spread out. Lou Marson is not going to hit a great deal, but as far as a catcher is concerned, he can catch it, throw it, call it, and block it. With the best of them. Pretty good lead by Diazza. He takes off. And that is out of play. 
So the count now one and two. We have not seen anything but the fastball of Jimenez. He's got very good stuff if he has command of it. That's low. Two and two. Our Sox come in hitting at 241 as a club with a 3.41 ERA. Good block by Marson because that ball could have easily have gotten by. As a snap for a double play. Boy, that's a nice, nice pick right there by Jimenez. It really helps if you can field your position. It really helps if you square off on your follow through. And Jimenez right there. Fortunately for him, it was to the glove side. Makes a good solid throw to Cabrera, and it's pretty easy after that. A 1 6 3. That'll bring up Adam. Done at 231, five homers and 16 knocked in. Jimenez's biggest year was 2010 with the Rockies, 19 and 8. With 2.66 ERA. Yeah, the way he started that season off, they were talking in terms of him winning possibly 30 games. I think he had 15 by the All Star break. Breaking ball, no. He was a little disappointed because they gave some long term deals to a few guys. They did not offer him one. And then he went four and four the next year and off to Cleveland he went. High, high into left field. Charlie Duncan will make the catch. That'll retire the side. And after one, no score. Top of the second inning, Santana, Hafner, and Duncan to face Chris Sale. Carlos Santana, 26 year old switch hitting catcher, playing first base tonight, comes in at 262, three homers. He's driven in 10. That's a fair ball. And he's got plenty of time, takes it, makes it. One down. Not easy to throw a slick baseball. And even though the tarp was on the infield, it has taken some water. 
AJ comes out has a pretty good angle on the throw anyway and throws him out easily. That'll bring up the DH Travis Hafner 34 year old veteran comes in at 295 a couple of homers and 10 driven in. Got to be careful first pitch especially fastball middle end. That's how the times change. When he first got to Cleveland he was originally with Texas. You had to be careful anywhere first ball fastball because <laughs> he could hit you out of the ballpark anywhere. Well, what is Left, a center center. What is a shoulder problem and that's what he had. What does that do. To a power hitter like him. Just can't create the bats the bat speed that you have. Same thing with Ray Fossey and almost every shoulder. Hafner had terrific bat speed. And he could drive the ball well over 400 feet to left center field. So that's what was taken away by the injury. Now he can pull it out of the park. Now he can pull it right. He can still hit it well over 400 feet to right and right center, but no more to left center. Bay Fossey, the former catcher, now broadcaster with the Oakland A's, is that's foul back and that's going to be out of play. He was injured in that collision at home plate. When Pete Rose ran into him, put his shoulder right into his Fossey's shoulder, and there was a knot that was developed there. And from that time on, the rest of his career, he just did not have. The bat speed. Oh, it's a shame because it took what looked to be a great career and made it a good career. Right. And that's well put. That's exactly what happened. There's two out. And a reminder during the Chicago White Sox for Weather Day presented by WGN on May 15th at USA La Field prior to the game against the Tigers. WGN meteorologist Tom Skilling will host a special program focused on weather. So go to whitesox.com slash WGN for more details. We should have had that one today. We have plenty of weather here. Here's a good fastball hitter and Shelly Duncan. That was in at 230, a couple of homers, eight knocked in. He's very much a middle end hitter. Surprising he only has one double. Change up. You're going to be able to get this one by him all the time because he's geared up for number one each and every time. Well, that's about the only way you can be a real good fastball yeah. hitter. You got to look for it. Well, Chris. As a starting pitcher, is using that changeup a lot more because realizing he's going to face guys three and possibly four times, you've got to give him a different look. And he's able to do that. And his straight change, highly underrated by most folks, is actually a very good one. 2 1 pitch. And now he's got two doubles. So the two out. Double by Duncan. Yep. Got the fastball. Got it middle in and down. And able to take it right down the line. Here's a tough little cookie at the plate. Jason Kipnis. Uh, Northbrook hitting at 256, three homers. He's driven in 12. Had a chance to talk with Jason before the game tonight. Don't have a lot of friends and family at the games. Takes first pitch strike. He said he was not particularly overjoyed to see Chris Sale in the starting rotation. Because he's got to face him four times instead of just occasionally once. Oh, and to the count. Well, there's some guys that I don't care what your name is, you just hate the face.
that one at 93. Shelly Duncan is second. And that's into left field. Tank came in. Now going back, he can't get it. So Duncan's going to score on back to back doubles by Duncan and now Kipnis, and it's 1 0 Cleveland. RBI number 13. As Kipnis stayed in on a breaking ball, followed it across, drove it to left field, and as soon as Viciedo broke in, he was done. Could not back up. If he gets a good break, maybe, but it was a hard hit ball. Aaron Cunningham, the right fielder at 243, no homers and two RBIs. Big hack and no contact. Ninth inning in Detroit. Tigers leading Kansas City nine to three. Later on, Minnesota taking on the Angels in Anaheim. And that's foul. Bottom of the seventh in the Bronx. Baltimore leading the Yankees six to one. Baltimore coming in at 14 and 9. Yankees at 13 and 9. That's Brian Mattis throwing for Baltimore, and he's had a very good start to this young season. He gone. The two out doubles by Duncan and Kipnis after an inning and a half, one nothing tribe. Click. Jim Angel, our director and the crew. Well, he went with Gordon Beckham. He's going with Piazza. And more Foy, Leslie Gaggiano and I. We're going to go with Viciato. As here is Polly. And for a limited time, get incredible lease deals on the 2011 BMW 3 Series. Visit ChicagolandBMW.com for more information. Ball high in the left field. Got the first ball fastball. And didn't miss it by much. Just got under it by a touch. So one pitch one out and here's AJ. A 
J.J. 309 for homer 17 driven in. Takes it up and takes strike one. And count nothing in two. Amena is not doing a whole lot but pumping the fastball in the early going. He's thrown four fastballs to AJ. 90, 92, 93, and 94. You'd have to think another fastball might be a base hit. And it's way back. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Tried to trick him. And couldn't do it. This game is tied at one. Home run number five ties in with Adam Dunn and Paul Conerco for the team lead. His 18 runs batted in leads the team in that department. And he unloaded on that one. That was a no doubter. Our four drive of the game. It's the first off speed pitch he saw in the at bat. Maybe that's why Obaldo didn't throw it earlier. And Tim Timmons, the home plate umpire, wants to make sure the smoke clears. Because that one might have left a vapor trail. That change up went a long it way. It went a long way. There's Rios. Alex at 311, a homer. He's driven in eight. He has faced him in his eight times, and he's drawn a collar. Now he's going to wait for a second. Is that smoke just wants to settle in around home plate? Well, maybe the smoke and. Uh, a little far. But whatever the case, visibility is very good for the pitchers. Not so good for the hitter right now. Jacks it up, takes a strike. One and one to count. Of course, with that home run by Pierzynski, the Alex Nellius family will donate $100 to White Sox charities for every Sox homer hit throughout the course of the season. It is number 24. So $2,400 donated by Alex Nellius in loving memory of Ursula. And another souvenir. Baldo has now given up four home runs in just under 26 innings of work. Two and two. The Seattle on deck. Yeah, it's full. Ball hit hard. Meanwhile, two down. And won't send out a big White Sox shout out, hello, and happy birthday to Rosemary Hampson of Valparaiso. And that's with a lot of love from your daughter, Rosemary Riley. Rosemary Jr. 
<laughs> it's, that's very nice. Very creative name. Ball one to Tank. Tank has faced Jimenez four times, has a couple of hits. In and out of the upper tank. Jimenez started with the Rockies back in 2001. And count one and two. At just 28 years old, he's well into his fifth year of major league experience. And it's full. Brett Morrell waiting to see if perhaps Jimenez will walk it or find a way to keep the inning alive. And there's ball four. So the second walk issued by Jimenez. Then here comes Brent. Went at 178 and one for nine lifetime off the big tall Cleveland right hander. Good breaking ball right there. That's when he's home. He figured to have breaking this one out a little sooner, but that's a late breaking sharp curveball. Right now having a whole lot of problems with his release point on that fastball. I pop up into short left field Duncan coming on. And that'll do it but the long home run by AJ in this game is tied at one. A 1-1 tie here in the top of the third inning. First 
pitch high and wide to the catcher, Lou Marson. Marson at 111, no homers and one RBI. You do have to watch the bunt with Marson. Morello's back. There's a young lady dressed appropriately. In a cool, moist evening at the ballpark. Two and one. Wind has been a factor here. But no box. Come back and get it. Temperature considerably warmer tonight than it has been. It's full. It's one of those guys you want to lay it in and say, hit it at somebody. Adding 111. Can't afford to walk in. And that's out of play. And a reminder stay connected to your socks all season long. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, pin us on Pinterest, and reblog our unique Tumblr content. Visit whitesocks.com slash connect today. We do that exceptionally well. Well, that's your favorite. That yes. is. Dreaded leadoff walk. First walk issue by Chris. Now Marson for a catcher runs very well. So you have to watch the bun in this situation. Bradley went out to Diaza. Ate him up right there. Can't turn it though. Nice effort to stay in there by Gordon Beckham at second base because he knew on a slow developing ground ball he was going to take some contact from Marson. So this ball inside out, Brantley with good speed. And Gordon staying right there, making sure he gets a throw off. Just an eyelash late. Got to bring up the third baseman Donald. He popped up high pop up. To Alexi. Manly good lead. Manly two for four in stolen bases and the Indians 14 for 21 in stolen bases. Southpaw's got the rain gear on. There's a strike. One out, one and one to count. Bottom of the eighth in Toronto. Blue Jays leading Texas seven to six. Oakland leading Boston five one after seven at Fenway. Top of the ninth down at Tropicana Field. Rays leading Seattle three to one. Tampa Bay 15 and 8. They got him picked off. Get the pitcher out of there. That's why. Too soon. It was delivered too soon by 
Ramirez. AJ was trying to get down here to get in the play. Yep. That's that's something they worked on a lot in spring training. But you got to keep the pitchers out of this thing if you can. It is a caught stealing. E1. Caught stealing 136. Two and two. Number two. So two gone to as Drupal Cabrera, who grounded out to his counterpart, Ramirez. Both Cabrera and Santana switch hitters are hitting better from the right side than the left. It's tough to pitch around this guy to get to Carlos Santana. Breaking ball misses. Got to play right side, one and one. Two balls and a strike. The 26 year old switch hitting shortstop. Last year, Cabrera hit 273, 25 homers, and knocked in 92. That breaking ball. Two and two. Right handers have a tendency to give up on this. It's a backdoor breaking ball that starts way over the left handed batter's box and snaps over at the last instant. Backs it up with a fastball, and that's Souvenir right side. Now feel straight up, spread out, about equidistant. Full count. You'd like to get Cabrera before you get to that guy. Hello, Santana. Also, you'd love to be out of this inning before he gets to the 50 pitch mark. Down ball. Nice pick by Brent. And he pitches out of it. So we get we botch up the rundown play, but Going to the bottom of the third, still tied at one.
is Lou Marson, who threw out 24 of 72 last season. That's 33.3 percent. And this catcher profile is sponsored by Xfinity Home. Xfinity Home offers state-of-the-art features that help you stay connected to your home and family anytime, anywhere. Beckham takes ball one. Gordon 0 for 8 against Jimenez. Jeff Manto would like Gordon to stand a little taller in the batter's box. Two and one. And no time like the present for his first lifetime hit against Jimenez, who's fallen behind. He got the catbird, see? Three and one. Ducking looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. The old catbird seat. Get the 3-1 fastball and put a charge into it. First home run of the year. And all Shelly Duncan could do was take one step and realize it was going to be gone in a heartbeat. Fastball on the inner portion and up and gone. So here's the Aza. Pops that first pitch up. Now into the smoke. trying to find it. Now they find it. They can't make the play, and the Aza in the second save. Yes. Smoke got him. I wouldn't be surprised if Manny Acta might come out and mention next time there's a home run to delay play for a bit. Because that ball went up into the mist, the smoke, and it's a very short double. And credit Diaz because he took nothing for granted. He just came out of the box hustling. Well, they're going to let them play right now. It's okay. That's hit good it, for hit, us. Hit another one up there. Here's Alexi. Hit the ball hard. But right back to Ubaldo, who made a good grab of it and turned it into a 1 6 3 double play. Alexei's got some work to do. Ball one. Two and oh. Get the job done. And bobbled by Cabrera. Just his second error of the season, both of them coming in against us. Looked to me like he looked up and for some reason tried to figure out where Ramirez was. Just flat out drops it. That puts runners at the corners and nobody out. Big break. So here's Adam. He popped up very high to Duncan in left field. Mm -hmm. 
Makes that breaking ball inside. Count evens at one to the big. Tries to heat him up. Misses. Two balls in the strike. Polly on deck. Now he's got the catbird seat. Menez early has been both wild and wild in the strike zone, which is a bad combination. And that's ball four. That will load him up for Pauly. Last week, our American League Player of the Week. Balkan Erko. Look at those numbers. That's a month's work for most folks. See what's possible with AT&T Uverse TV and AT&T High Speed Internet. Rethink possible. Paulie leading off last inning just missed one. High towering drive out there in deep left field. Pitching that sequence, very important. Advantage goes to Canerco. Big speed at second and third. And if this continues, they're going to walk up 90 feet. Because Jimenez has lost track of the strike zone. Backs packed with socks. And the count three and oh. Turns him loose. Good call. I love it. I love it. Time for the 3 0 offense once again. That one just foul. I love it. Got yourself a lead 2 to 1 here early on. And he got that ball inner portion. I mean, if that ball is on the outside corner, I'm sure he takes it. Inside with a fastball. As we'll try to turn on it, see if you can keep it fair. Three one pitch. That's ball four. Sox lead it three to one. RBI number 16 for Pauly. Might see Scott Radinsky come out here and say something to Ubaldo, who has just kind of fallen apart after the year. And sometimes you expect this from young pitchers. Guy will make an error behind him, dig him in a deeper hole than he was otherwise in. And then you lose your concentration. You don't expect it from a veteran pitcher, but that's exactly what's happened after the error by Cabrera at shortstop. RBI number 16 for Pauly, and a quiet one at that. That'll bring up AJ to the plate, and here's what he did last inning. Four straight fastballs, and then 
The straight chain leaves the yard. Tying him for the team lead in home run with five. Takes all one inside, and advantage goes to AJ. Just underneath it. And dropped the ball. Oh, Adam. That had the <laughs> infield fly rules in effect. That <laughs> dropped it. But he didn't go to the right base. If he goes to second base, Dunn's going to be out. He decided to come home with it. Cabrera misses it. You see where Adam is. He just goes behind him. We've got a double play. Well, the runners can't advance at their own peril. Yes, and that would have been his peril. So here is Alex takes breaking ball strike. Alexei at third, Dine at second, Pauly at first. Here in the bottom of the third after a 56 minute rain delay, if you're just tuning in. 3 3 and 1 for us, 1 2 and 1 for them. Men is having a hard time getting on the same page with Marson. And you just don't want to let him off the hook here. This is not a prolific scoring Indian team. Putting them in a deep hole at the beginning is a huge leg up. And Michael Young with two out. Knocked in Ian Kinsler from third base to tie that game at seven up in Toronto. Just underneath that, that ball was ticketed to right center. Meanwhile, he's in the hole, nothing and two. Good two strike here. That's in the hole. Can they turn it? Nope. So Alexei scores, and it's a 4 1 Sox lead. RBI number nine for Rios, and a wise choice at second base by Kipnis. Because as Donald had to give ground, he got the ball way. Too late to even think about two. Ranging wide of the bag. He took a little too much time. And Kipnis just looked and held it. First pitch strike to tank. He walked last inning. And there's a Ground ball base hit as Dunn will score, and it's a 5 1 Sox lead. Well, that time Kipnis did not go to the second base bag. Cabrera makes a great stop, and if he has any play at all, it's going to be the force out. He's looking there, but Jason Kipnis late to the bag. There was nothing that Cabrera could do with it. Here's Brent as the Sox hit around here in the bottom of the third. Now ball up with it over to Kipnis. But a nice four spot as Gordon Beckham's first homer started it off.
Sox with a 5 1 lead here going to the fourth inning. First pitch strike to Santana starts him off with a changeup. Santana hit a little number out in front of the plate that AJ went out, got it, and threw him out. Oh, and to the count. I mentioned Michael Young tied up that ball game at seven. Brett Lowry just homer. Well, he's going to be a good one. He's strong. Yes, sir. Just got a piece of that. We got some. I tell you, that's. We have some terrific young players coming into baseball. Bryce Harper's got a chance to be a monster, as does. Harper, as Lowry, as that's out of play. How about Cespedes in Oakland? Got a chance to be a monster. We, we, we saw him too up close and these personal. guys are not just offensive oriented though as far as they can all run they can all throw they can all throw and they can all catch the baseball that ball in the left field tank So one out. Here's Hafner. He grounded out to back him. Cespedes has already driven in 20 runs with his run batted in tonight. Well, we found out you cannot let him beat you. Not in that lineup. The 0 2. He gone. Two down. Good sweeping slider. AJ smothered it with the tag on him. And as a starter, Chris now throwing two speeds of breaking ball. One, his hard slider, and the other one, he takes something off, it breaks even bigger. He's really going to be a good one. Yeah, Shelly Duncan, a double and a run score. We didn't mention it. Kid. Anaheim Trout. Mike Trout. He's got a chance to be a, a stud. Yeah, I mean, they, they talked about him with the elite in the game as far as prospects. He was rated number one ahead of Harper. But these are big guys that can all fly, which is unique to what we've seen the last 15 years. Ate him up inside. And that'll do it. That's what you got to do. Your team gives you the lead. You come down and get them. One, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth, leading by four.
with his first homer of the season. Take strike one low and away. And if you miss that home run. There's a shot into right field. Get down, it will. Oh, man. Don't let this young man start hitting. Well, the best part of this is the fact that he pulled the home run and then hit the line drive to right field. So using the whole field will start giving him a whole lot of confidence. As Jimenez stayed away for three pitches after throwing inside and having it leave the ballpark. Promising way to start the fourth. Maybe that'll get you some cheese drugs. I tell you, I'm really upset with Sully. Yeah. Nothing forthcoming, huh? No, no. That ball hit deep, but going foul. Oh, well, she's dissing me. Well, it's all right. Could be either the price of cheese or straws. We don't really know. Very much saddened by that. <laughs> as Diaz has walked and doubled. The pop up that got lost in the smoke after <laughs> Gordon <laughs> and Homer. Yeah, well, he, he probably owes Gordon the double. Because without that home run, that's an easy pop up five. And that's low. One and two the count. To Alejandro. Jimenez at the 70 pitch count with nobody out here in the fourth. That would mean bullpen night for the tribe. Wow, a bullet. You're not going to be able to turn two. That's just a hang with them right there for Alejandro. That one might have gotten a piece of Jimenez, but he says he's okay. Again, very fortunate to hit on the glove hand side. Now, Gordon, there was nothing he could do. And if Jimenez was quick enough, he can go to first. They'd have gotten Gordon in a rundown need to get the double play, but he was intent on cutting down the lead runner. Tough thing to do when you have a rocket hit back to you. Ball one to Alexei. Alexei is 0 for 2. There he goes. Throw. Safe. Alejandro now three for four in stolen bases. He stole that one on Jimenez. He got hit in the ribs with the throw from Marson. There was no chance at all for Marson. By the time he came up to throw, Alejandro had a three step jump. And that one catches him right in the ribs, but he does get the stolen bag. Take him up, Alexi. There's a base hit. They're going to wave him around. Here's the throw. Safe. 6 1. And even though it was a one hop rocket to right field, Joe McEwing knows it's going to be a wet baseball. And Aaron Cunningham has everything going for him because he's coming in, but he can't possibly get a great grip. And that ball came up the line. So Alexi drives in his seventh run of the year. Throw just a touch off target. The swipe tag, no. 
Tim Timmons on the call. And it was a correct one as Marson was not in the neighborhood with the tag. Here's Adam. He's 0 for 1, went out to left field, then last inning walked and scored. 6 6 and 1 for our Sox, 1 2 and 1 for their Indians. Got a shift on. Two, two and another count. Foul back. And Sox fans, it's time for the Chevy Youth Baseball League of the game. And tonight we want to recognize Country Chevrolet for their support of Hershey Little League. Country Chevrolet and your Chicago land and Northwest Indiana dealers are supporting over 30,000 young ball players in their communities throughout the Chevy Youth Baseball program by providing leagues with equipment kits, instructional clinics, and financial support. That's upstairs. From the big leagues to the youth league, Chevy is truly the official vehicle of baseball. As has been his custom tonight, Jimenez behind. Another one of the big Sox hitters. Fifth walk issued by Jimenez. I would think that would get that bullpen up and going. Scott Radinsky, the pitching coach. And we've seen little stirring, but nobody throwing. So here's Polly. Polly 0 for 1, just missed hitting one out of here, leading off the second, then last inning walk with the bases loaded. The Indians starting a streak of 21 straight games without a day off. That's probably one of the reasons why Jimenez is out there. Well, as you know, sometimes the manager. Has a reason for what he's doing. Sometimes he does. <laughs> you dug yourself into a hole now. Try to get yourself That's out. It. That strike. Evens accounted one. There's the pen. Garo Asensio. One in, one out, two on, and the one one. And another meeting. Well, he's going to go out there to give some time for Asensio to get loosened up in the bullpen. As Jimenez will deliver pitch number 82. Also, a reminder if you've seen the White Sox dynamic ticket deal of the week, we'll enjoy a variety of price options for specific games and seating locations. Now, the best tickets in the best locations directly from the White Sox. Buy early and save with the White Sox dynamically priced tickets. Visit whitesoxcom pricing. Hi, pop up. Kipnis. Infield fly rule is called. Two down, and that'll bring up AJ. And you can buy early and save them. You get the best locations. For May 11th, 12th, and 13th. Lower reserve, normally 36 bucks. Well, 30 bucks. And that's with fireworks. And Mother Son Night and Fireworks presented by Magellan Corporation on the 12th. Normally 34. Well, that's 28. Breaking ball low to AJ. AJ is one for two, a homer, a long homer. His fifth of the year back in the second inning. Yeah. 
That ball hit hard in center field right at Brantley. So that's a hang with them for Perzinski. But another one crosses the plate. We'll go to the fifth, leading by five. Member FDIC. Kipnis, Cunningham, and Marson, the lower third of the Indian order up. Kipnis, one for one, an RBI double. Takes ball one from Chris Sale. Tardy on that one, souvenir left side. A battler. He battles each and every at bat. He's a battler. Got him as a two. He was an outfielder. And then they told him the quickest road to the major league was to learn how to play second, which he hated at first. So he is two for two. Rips that breaking ball right back through the middle. Well, that's twice Chris has tried to go to the breaking ball against them, and twice Gibbons has hit the ball on the nose. This time for a single. When it goes down and gets it, doesn't give any ground at all. Too impressive at bat so far. Cunningham struck out his first trip. 26 year old outfielder. Takes it up, could not pull the trigger, takes the strike. Xfinity pitch tracks will show you that it did have a part of the plate. Also unhittable in there. Tampa Bay B settle three to one. Moore. 0 
over Nowesi. Tampa Bay lost Evan Longoria from four to eight weeks. That is a huge loss for them. That loss for them is comparable to us losing Pauly. Yeah, very, yes. <laughs> very much so. Shanks it right over there, dugout. Times on the same pitch. As he goes to the breaking ball down and out of his own after setting him up inside. And that is not a good swing. But Chris can get some of those. Here's Marson. He walked, leading off the third. Fastball strike. Pops him up in the right field. Alex. Two down. Gonna bring up the leadoff hitter, Michael Brantley, who has gone out to center and ended into a 5 4 fielder's choice. Pitch strike. Huge gap out there in right center. Alex also well off the line in right. They're not expecting Brantley to pull anything from Chris Sale. Shoves that one left. And another souvenir left side. Once again, the O2, there he goes. And that might be close, close, nope. Two rows back. Seventy five pitches for Chris Sale at this point, which is seemingly a fairly high total considering he's only given up three hits. And he's only walked one.
Breaking ball low and away, one and two. First of this three game set. Make your plans to be with us tomorrow night. Philip Umber against Josh Tomlin. Now, if you can't make it to the ballpark, that game will be over Comcast Sportsnet. Then in the finale on Thursday night, Johnny Danks against Justin Masterson. And that game right back here in CIU. So there's the stolen base number five for Kipnis. Took advantage of what Chris was offering him. He didn't look at him at 0 and 2. 1 and 2 or. Pitch that made it 2 and 2. They've seen a lot of pitches so far in this at bat. The more pitches you see, the more dangerous you become. He battled him the first time up. He has yet to go down on strikes. There you see a tough at bat by Michael Brantley. So a full count. Ball hit hard, but right to Adam. Sucks it up, steps on the bag. That'll retire the side. We are halfway home, leading six to one. Bank member FDIC. Breaking ball low and away to Alex Rios leading off here in the bottom of the fifth and this game is official. Do I know the count? Alex is 0 for 2 but he has knocked in a run. Orioles beat the Yankees 7 to 1. Show wall. His 1,000th major league. Win. Well, he's got those Orioles believing that they are not supposed to finish in last place. Well, that's the whole thing. It's attitude. There's a strike. It's amazing. It's amazing what attitude can overcome. They're 15 and 9. Nice beginning. Donald. And that's out number one. And White Sox families.
come to U.S. Cellular Field on Sunday, May 13th to celebrate Mother's Day. First 10,000 ladies, age 14 and older, will receive a White Sox tote bag. And it is a beautiful tote bag. Saw one the other day. So purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Breaking ball strike, the tank, who has walked. And knocked in a run with an infield single. Checks it up. That's why Joe Madden is such a great manager. Got these guys believing they can win. What he did last year was one of the greatest managing jobs I have seen, if not the best, in 53 years in this game. Well, he took a completely revamped bullpen from top to bottom. And Put them in his ball club in the playoffs. Two down. That's the first strikeout. Are you ball though? And here's Brent, who's popped up to left and got it out into a fielder's choice. And a boy, Brent. Here's Gordon. He is two for two tonight. His first homer leading off the third. That's when we scored four. In the last inning, a bullet. Single in the right field. Takes that breaking ball high. Twenty one to count. Yeah, if we get if we get this Seattle Morel and Beckham going. There goes Brent. Marson throws. Safe. Brent picks up his third stolen base in four attempts. Well, as good as Marson is, he cannot compensate for a very slow Obaldo Jimenez. He's got a long delivery. I venture to say that. He's way above 1415, probably close to 16, delivering the ball home. Well, Robin and Mark Parent seeing the same thing we are. Yeah. And you know what? That's okay if you don't plan to give up any other hits. Greg Maddox, Dwight Gooden both didn't care about stolen bases because they didn't give up any hits after that. Tom Seaver either. I'm not sure if Aldo Jimenez is in that category yet. Pulled his head just a bit on that one. To a full count. Flips that one in the right field. That's going to be a base hit. Brent, here he comes. Here's the throw. Safe. Beckham, three for three. Two RBIs, Brent. The stolen base pays off. Four runs batted in for Gordon Beckham. And he takes that one off the ground. So when you're in the middle of a slump, you can't buy a hit. When you all of a sudden start to swing the bat well, you take one off the ground, it finds a hole. Good solid throw, but Marson can't hold on to it. So here's Alejandro. He's one for two.
16,212 on a rainy night here in the city beautiful. 56 minute rain delay. Sensio once again. Two and one. One hundred and fourth pitch on the way for Jimenez. He's had a very tough evening. Five walks if you're just joining us. And the count three and one. Six. So that appears to be it. For Jimenez, whose 105th pitch will be his last. And he acted for that slow walk out to the mound. So Ubaldo Jimenez will depart. And Third inning. Came up, hit the ball out of the ballpark. His first home run of the year. Fourth inning. Line drive base hit. And the fifth inning. Drove in yet another run with his third hit. The Anything's Possible replay is brought to you by the Illinois Lottery, who each day make anything possible. Two out, two on, one in. Or and one the count to Alexei. Alexei's one for three, an RBI single. Yaro Asensio comes in the game. One on one record and ERA. 7.15 on for the ninth time. The opponents pasting him at a 3.04 clip. One and two the count. If you're just joining us, Tigers beat Kansas City nine to three at Comerica Park. Porcello over Hochevo. 
That's popped up into left center. Duncan is there. But we tack another one on the board. We'll go to the sixth leading seven to one. It'll be Donald Cabrera Santana to face Chris Sayers. That's a souvenir right side. Seven runs on eight hits, one error for our guys. One run, three hits, one error for their guys. Jason Donald for two, a pop to short, and a grounder to third. Breaking ball low. Phillies beat Atlanta four to two down in Georgia. That ball hit well in the center field. Diazza. One down. Wrong part of the ballpark for Donald. Just the right spot for Chris Sale. Seventh inning. Out in Denver, 7 2 Dodgers. How about that start that Matt Kemp has had? <laughs> wow. It's almost magical. <laughs> well, he's had a tough night. He's only one for three. Red sucks it up. Goes Cabrera out. He is now 0 for 3. Kemp came in hitting 414. Playing a great center field. And leading the Dodgers, who surprisingly are in first place. Well, he's an interesting story from what I've heard. I've never met him, never talked to him. As here is Santana. Oh, for two. I understand when he first got to the big leagues, he had some problems. Well, they were thinking of trading him. I mean, he was a guy that you might have had earlier. Nice inning right here for Chris Sale. As Santana's retired, we go to the bottom of the six, leading by six.
Pauly on deck. AJ in the hole. 7 1 good guy. Adam has gone out to left and twice he has walked and he has scored once. Takes first pitch strike. Second pitch strike, 0 and 2. If you're just joining us. Two home runs in the game, one by a long one by Pierzynski, and one by Beckham, his first of the year. Chops that foul. And you can come to the Chevy Ride and Drive event in Lot E here at US Cellular Field this Saturday, May 5th, from 7 30 to 3 p.m. Test drive a Chevrolet and receive a free pair of White Sox tickets. You must be at least 21 years of age with a valid Illinois driver's license to participate. One and two. One out. Given this one, four and two thirds innings, gave up seven runs, only four of them earned on eight hits, but six big walks. No surprisingly with only one strikeout. Pauly. 0 for 2 with an RBI. Number 16. Pauly, if you did not hear, was American League Player of the Week last week. That's the fifth time he has been accorded that honor. Two and the count. Pretty nice week's worth of action. Six extra base hits, three of them leaving the park. Two and one the count. Right foot again. Just another thing that Paul does not need. It's the foul ball off his foot. And it did get a piece of the right foot. So two and two. To Canerco. Cabrera. And out number two. And you can organize a group outing of 20 more guests during the season. Purchase a block of tickets or enhance your outing by upgrading to a pregame patio party, Diamond Suite. One of our other great party areas. So call 312 674 1000 and visit whitesocks.com. And the Bertucci boys. That's where they roam. One of them's roaming. Well, Bruno's on the DL. Is there as a another foul off a foot? AJ. AJ is Homer. Topped up. And lined hard to center. One and one to count. Astros beat the Mets six to three.
And that's a souvenir. Of course, the Cubs at Cincinnati. The game was postponed. D backs beat the Nasty Nets. Five to one. Santana will take himself and that'll retire the side. We have completed six and lead it seven to one. So with Chris Sale comfortably ahead at seven to one, Holman comes into the game on for the tenth time. The ERA five sixty eight, and Sale went six innings, gave up a run on three hits. He walked just one, banning three. It'll be Hafner, Duncan, and Kipnis. Face our southpaw. Abner has grounded to Beckham and struck out. First pitch strike. You just joining us, a 56 minute rain delay. Count 0 and 2. Just nicked it. Zach Stewart. Throwing in the pen. Especially after an off day. You gotta keep those pens been sharp. Thank you all very much. Chopper. Lexi. One out. Again, a reminder, make your plans to be with us tomorrow night, game two of this three-game set. Philip Umber against Josh Tomlin. Can't make it that game on Comcast Sportsnet. On Thursday evening, getaway evening, as we will depart for 
Detroit and Cleveland for seven games. Day night doubleheader at Progressive Field on the seventh. That'll be Johnny Danks against Justin Masters on Thursday evening. Ball hit deep in the center field. Now it's a back. And it is a 7 2 ball game. Back in now, two for three. Third home run of the year. He's driven in nine. Duncan loves high fastball, loves low fastball. Pretty much loves all fastballs. Gibness, RBI double and a single. Two and know the count. No walks. Three and oh. One. Close enough. Ball hit sharply to Alexei. Right over the top. Two down. Robin makes his way out to the mound and now he's going to go to the pen. And while we have a moment Sox fans join us on Saturday May 26 as our Sox take on these Indians the first 20,000 fans will receive a Robin Ventura bobblehead presented by Pepsi Max. That is Saturday May 26. Omen departs Stewart comes on and we'll be back. Sixty on for the fifth time. He inherits the bases clear. Two outs here in the top of the seventh inning, and a five-run lead to protect. Mm -hmm. 
So here's Cunningham. He's over two with a couple of punch outs. Ball one. Seven runs, eight hits, one error for our Sox. Two runs, four hits, one error for their Indians. Off Stewart, Caroms over to Duncan. Now shuffles it. That'll be a base hit. Ball hit hard. Cunningham hits a rocket right back at Zach. Now they still have a chance, but it's going to be a very tough play. Dunn tries to get it to him, and then a minor collision at first base with both guys coming away unscathed. Here's Marson, the catcher, has walked and gone out to right field. the count. And there's the strike. Talking to some Cleveland people before the game, they said when they played the Angels, the Wolves was going so bad they had been on second, third, first base open, obviously. And pitched to him. Rather than putting him on, as that's deep in the center field. Meanwhile, it's caught, and that'll retire the side. They pick up one on Charlie Duncan's homer. Seventh inning stretch, we lead it seven to two. Baseball. Bottom of the seventh inning in the 7 2 Sox lead, game one of the three games set. It'll be Rios, Viciato, and Morell to face Asensio, who came on back in the fifth. Watch out. Alex is 0 for 3 with an RBI. I pop up. Can't get it. 
So they've had all kinds of problems in this infield. There's where Kipnis has got to run him off. Easier to play for him, oh. better angle. Five to one easier. But again, gets back to that team era concept. They've given Santana an air. Do I know the count? Thanks is one for two with an RBI. Yeah, but getting back to pools, they told me that he was swinging the bat so bad. In that situation with first base open, Howie Kendrick was on deck. They went ahead and pitched the pools, got him out. And just they said they'd never seen. No, that that would never happen. And back tonight, Kendrick was two for two. Pujols had driven in a run, but he was 0 for two, hitting I think 213, something along those lines. That's what he's hitting. But somebody will pay. It's really quite amazing to see hitter of his magnitude, and there wasn't anything that he couldn't hit. All of a sudden, go over there, and it's hard to believe that it's a pressure of a contract. I mean, he's played under extreme pressure before at various times, so that's not the answer. No, that's not the, that's not the issue with him. Payoff pitch. There he goes. Got him, and he's safe. Well, I think that. Gibbons might have thought that it was ball four. Take another look at it. Yeah, he's not going over to the bag. He thinks it's ball four. It's not. Just a mental mistake. And Marson is kind of wondering, why don't you put the tag on, son? That's fouled away over to our dugout by Brent, who's one for three with a run scored and a stolen base. So Alex picks up his second stolen base of the season. No, it, it's it's that's the situation with pools. That nobody, nobody can answer. If they could, they would. <laughs> and it wouldn't be going on. Right there by as Drupal Cabrera. Wow, what a play that was. Ball was scalded by Brent. And that'll bring up Beckham, who is three for three, a homer, and an RBI single. This is a one hop rocket. And he just picks it easily. It's about as hard as Brent can hit a baseball right there. He expect that one to be in left center field. Pitch strike. And that's popped up. And it's going to be playable. Marson is there, makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. We're into the eighth, leading by five.
the first of this three game set. Be the top of the order. Brantley, Donald, and Cabrera, the schedule hitters, face Zach Stewart. First pitch strike. Brantley is 0 for 3. Seven runs, eight hits, one error for us. Two runs, five hits, two errors for them. That's low. Ball hit hard, sucked up by Brent. Nice play. Tough play. Nick Hagado getting ready in the pen. They can get it up there in a hurry. Or Nick, I should say. Came over from the Boston Red Sox. And when Rafael Perez went down, they called up Hagado. Pitch. Count even the point. Perez came up with an oblique problem. Good movement on that fastball, low and in. Tigers beat Kansas City nine to three, and Detroit. Austin Jackson, four for five. He's now hitting at 314. He's just getting better and better. What a start he's off to. That's a little bit low. So a full count. Out of play. And hitting the road, we'll take our socks with you there because you can subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every White Sox out of market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Yes, once again, they all pitch, and there's a little three hopper. Two out. So visit WhiteSox.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. There's Ed Struble. Cabrera. Didn't hit the ball out of the infield against Chris Sale in three at bats. This side hits for a lower average, but has more power as a left hand hitter. Two and out. Oh. Outfield straight up, spread out. The yeah, was a deep out there in the center. Pull the string on him on 2 0. Good pitch when the hitter is expecting a fastball. He doesn't get it. Two out, two and two the count. Another souvenir. I was looking at Kansas City. They got some guys scuffing over there. Gordon hitting at 233, Hosmer hitting at 180. They had a lot of life taken out when Perez and Soria went down. Nice pitch. 
Nice inning for the Zach Meister. Go to the bottom of the eighth, still leading by five. Nick Hagedon. Sensio did a good job. Two and a third, two strikeouts, and nothing else. And Hagedon on for the fifth time. The ERA, a scant 208. Bonin's hitting a minuscule 125. Young man's got very good stuff. If he harnesses it, he's going to be a very good pitcher. Hey, he's 26 years old, 6'5, 230 pounds out of Seattle. And he can rush it up there. Top of the order for us here in the bottom of the eighth. Our guys lead it 7 to 2. First pitch strike. Ball hit sharp. I tell you, Diaz is swinging that bat. He is swinging that bat. He looks like he's just getting better and better. Looks to me like that would qualify him to hit the click, wouldn't you? <laughs> you talk. No, huh? <laughs> Let me see. Can't, can't sell you that one. Harold. Harold Hill. <laughs> Here's Alexei. He's one for four with a run scored and an RBI. Next first pitch, fastball strike. No, I think the crew is going to win this one handily tonight. With Gordon Beckham. Gordon Beckham. A breakout night. That ball is hit hard. Right to him. That's another hang woofing for Alexei. He's just starting to get cranked up because Alexei is. Always been a slow starter. Lexay's hit the ball three hard, hard three times tonight. So here is Adam. 0 for 2 with a couple of walks and a run scored. It's high into center field. It's going to be a quick one, two, three for Hagedon, and we'll go to the ninth.
He's 0 and 1 ERA. Just under nine on for the eighth time. He does have four saves and keep your closer sharp. Got to get him an inning every now and then in non save situations. Carlos Santana, Travis Hafner, and Shelly Duncan. Santana, 0 for 3. One and one to count. Santana last year, 27 homers, 79 knocked in. He came over from the Dodgers in exchange for Casey Blake. No, they get, no walks. They give up a good one. There's a strike, so a full count. He gone. Good comeback, Hector. Our Xfinity pitch tracks. Santiago didn't like it, but too close to take. On a rainy night, seven to two in the night. Exactly. <laughs> a little too close to take. All those things come into play. <laughs> yep. Hafner's 0 for three. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Takes first pitch strike. Mentioned earlier, Orioles defeated the Yankees 71, Buck Showalter's 1,000th career victory. Only the 58th, so our congratulations go out to Buck. The only 58th manager reach that milestone. And there have been a few managers in the history of this game. Two two pitch. So he went full to Santana, he's full to Hafner. He gone. Two down. Shelly Duncan, who's two for three, a double, a bullet double. And then he just took one right over that center field fence for his third homer in the seventh inning. Know the count. There's one. And count three and one.
So the two out walk to Duncan and that'll bring up Kipnis, Jason. Two for three, an RBI double and a sharp single. Breaking ball and very quickly 0 and 2. He got away with a cookie right there. low Mar and I Philip Umber against Josh Tomlin so make your plans to be with us here at the ballpark as here is the chopper Beckham's got to hurry nope. need to beat that play anyway whether Adam hangs on to it or not so there's a break Unfortunately for Kipnis, his third hit of the night. Hits right off the plate. Gordon has to hurry with the bare hand. And Kipnis had the bag. Good effort by Beckham. And here is Cunningham. One for three. Takes ball one. Souvenir right side, so one and one to the 26 year old outfielder. Mentioned Humber against Tomlin tomorrow night on Thursday evening, Johnny Danks against Justin Masterson. Tomorrow's game will be over Comcast Sportsnet, and Thursday's right back here on WCIU. There's the strike, and the count one and two. Screwball low. Yeah, went to the screwball and couldn't hit with it. Another one and a full count. Things getting a little dicey. They are indeed. Another screwball. Settles low. A two on, two out, full count. And that, my friends, will load them up. A couple things to bear in mind when you think about who might come in. One, two, and Johnny Damon hit from the left side, and they're both on the bench. So with that in mind, Matt Thornton loosening up.
Tying run in the on deck circle. After two quick strikeouts. A base hit. Sandwiched in between two walks. They loaded them up for Lou Marson. And here comes Coop. Well, the base on balls with kills. That's what usually makes the great closer the great closer. You've got a hit to get on. He's not going to put you on. And Santiago just trying to learn his craft. But in the meantime, he struggled. So here's Marson. Fakes outside. Carson walked, going went out to right, and then last time up in the seventh line, very hard to Diazza in center. Big pitch coming up here, the one-one. Goes to Marson. And two and two the count. Right here, Hector. Slowly hit. Alexei. Yes. And this ball game is over. Nice play by Ramirez. Just to nip him at first base. So the Sox run their record to 12 and 11. Cleveland falls to 11 and 10. The Tigers with that win tonight are also 12 and 11. Three way tie for first place. And let's check out. Our Miller Lite play of the game coming, leading off the third inning. It's Gordon Beckham's first home run of the year. He parlayed that into a three for four night. Big night for Gordon. Big night for the Sox as they take the first of a three game series from the first place team. Well, Chris Sale was just awesome again. Working six innings, giving up just that one run, three hits, one walk at three strikeouts. And it certainly looks like he has settled in to what a lot of hard throwing young left handers when they make a transition from the bullpen to the starting rotation. He is pacing himself. And, and, and I really like what he's done so far because we're seeing the straight change. Instead of seeing just one hard slider, we're seeing two variations of the breaking ball. And it looks to me like he was brought to the big leagues as a starter. You'd never know that he came from the bullpen. All right, and right now. Let's go down on the field with Gordon Beckham. Gordon, nice going tonight, big guy. Thanks, Hawk. That home run, the first one coming, and that started off that four-run third for us. What what was your thought process tonight? Are you, you doing anything, thinking any different? Uh, I just wanted to be, you know, get back to being me and uh, not worrying about everything, and I uh, was able to come up there today and, and, and do what I'm, what I'm capable of. So it was, uh, it was a nice start to, uh, to May for sure. Well, don't you feel like in the last week to 10 days you've been swinging the bat a lot better just coming up empty? Yeah, I think that there's been some times where I've uh, had a chance for a knock and it hasn't happened, but 
uh, for the most part, I've been getting myself out. So it's been uh, it was nice tonight to get up there and uh, and do some damage. Well, Brent hit the ball well tonight, as and then Tank had that RBI single. If we can get the lower third of our order going, this this club is going to do a little cooking. Yeah, we should. I mean, you know, obviously the middle of our order has been carrying us, and we're uh, we're very happy about that. But it's uh, it's about time the bottom of the order got going too, and uh, we we took a step forward tonight. So that's good. How about this starting pitching? Uh, we've been doing good. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. We've got some great arms and some guys that re can really go out there and, and, and win a game for us. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited. Well, Sully's excited as well. <laughs> yeah. All my, right. My thanks for the time, is. buddy. Okay. All right. Gordon Beckham, and we'll be back.